All right. So the term Rosh Hashanah is the new year in Judaism. The biblical name for this holiday is Yom Torah, Feast of Trumpets. It is the first of the high holy days, and it is specified in Leviticus 23. And specifically, this occurs in the late summer or early autumn of the northern hemisphere. We're going to get a little bit into some science. We're going to get a little bit into what's happening in our atmosphere and our solar system. So specifically, Rosh Hashanah is speaking about the high holy days in the fall. And that begins with one Tishri. That is the beginning of our fall season. Our feast day is Yom Torah, Feast of Trumpets. So if I say that we have four New Year in a year, I'm not saying that there are four Rosh Hashanah. What I'm saying is there are four Rosh Kodeshim. So let's go into this word Rosh Kodesh. All right. So using one of the uh, biblical references from one of the members of my channel, Psalm 81, and we're going to read the whole thing and I'm going to explain further the definition and how to interpret Rosh Kodesh in the scriptures. Psalm 81 verse 1, a psalm of Asaph. Sing aloud unto Elohim our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the Elohim of Jacob. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Blow the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of Elohim of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out from the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah, Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. There shall no strange el be in thee, neither shall thou worship any strange el. I am Yahweh, your Elohim, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lusts, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of Yahweh should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. This is the testimony of the Exodus story as well as our time in the wilderness. Yah is saying a whole lot here in regards to the stubbornness of our hearts and what it is that he's trying to draw us into to protect us. These feast days are to protect us and keep us and to keep us in his way to establish us in his set times. As you see here, Psalm 81 verse 3, I'm going to read it again. This was the reference that was provided. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast. So again, again, I say, take me at face value until I explain. This is a mistranslation, new moon. It is interchanged with the word Rosh Chodesh. New moon in its context is supposed to be translated Rosh Chodesh, which means head of the month. So let's read it the way that it's supposed to be translated. Blow up the trumpet in the new month, in the time appointed on our solemn feast. And as we read here, Yah is speaking specifically about Pesach and unleavened bread. We're supposed to blow the trumpet during that time as well, because it is our new year. So if we were to go into the Hebrew, because a lot of this stuff, actually, you don't even need to go into the Hebrew, but because that's what we do, because that's how we were taught and that's what we are familiar with. I'm going to use this as a tool to further explain why this is a mistranslation. This is not supposed to be new moon. It is supposed to be new month. Let's click on it. We have here the English and the Hebrew. I'm going to go down here. In the new moon is Strong's H2330. And again, it says, Kodesh. 
Kodesh, right? Month means Kodesh. Rosh also can be interpreted beginning, head, chief. But in its context, Rosh means head, the top, the chief. And then as you keep reading, it explains what this new month is. It is an appointed time and it is a solemn feast. Chag, which is a feast, and a Rosh Chodesh, which is a new month. So let's open this up. The word is Chodesh. Chet, Dalid, Shin. It is referred to or translated as month 254 times. Chodesh is translated in the Hebrew as month 254 times. 20 times as new moon, but I guarantee if you keep reading the context of new moon, it will explain that it's a month. One time as monthly, one more time as another. And if you're familiar with how to read the Strong's Concordance, this gives you, again, the usages of the word. The first being the new moon. That's what the word says. That's what this, this translation says. But this means the new month. The first day of the month. I'm not even going to read this because this is not this is not correct. Keeping a lunar calendar or a lunar month is incorrect. I'm going to stamp my position using the word of Yah. 254 times Kodesh is translated as month. So let's go back and let's read. And this is also uh, one of the tidbits that I want to I want to provide that that was provided to me. A lot of times what we tend to do is we read one verse and we think we have the interpretation of the whole matter. What's important, wisdom says, to allow the word to interpret the word. Yah explains himself if you keep reading. So again, reading verse three, blow up the trumpet in the new month, in the time appointed on our solemn feast. When? For this was a statute for Israel. What was a statue? This solemn feast and a law of Yahweh of Elohim, because we know that the appointed times of Yahweh are laws and statues that we're supposed to keep as memorials. Verse five, this he ordained in Joseph for a testimony. Remember, Joseph told the children of Israel that they were going to go into captivity, but be released. And when they were released to take his bones from Egypt, because that's where he was going to be buried. We have to know the testimony of Joseph. This is also important when you are reading the Bible and learning how to interpret it with its interpretation, not our own interpretation. When he went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not, that solemn feast, that appointed time was after our forefather Joseph died and our people were held captive in Egypt. How do we know this? This is the testimony of what took place. In Egypt, we cried to Yahweh for the oppression that Pharaoh was putting us under, and Yahweh sent a deliverer. And he proved us when we were in the wilderness at the bitter waters. And that's where we complained and murmured against Yah. There shall no strange El be in thee, neither shall there worship any strange Els. And that's our testimony in the wilderness. We worshiped Baal through the golden calf. We did not worship Yah. And then here we are. I am Yahweh thy Elohim, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and fill it. So again, this chapter is referring to the appointed time, the solemn feast, and the new month of Passover or unleavened bread. The ordinance concerning the memorial is we're supposed to blow the trumpet. And that is simply recognizing the time that we're in. And that is in the spring season, our new year, the beginning of of months in the spring season, which is the first of Abib. Okay. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more. This is a clip from a series, Be Dressed and Ready, Reckoning Set Feast of Yahweh Using Enoch's Calendar. To learn more, please watch each part in its succession and more will be coming, Yah willing. Thank you.